Welcome back, my Elder Scribers, for another it. episode of Oblivion. We travel to Leowen, where we're going to do the quest there to gain a recommendation to enter the Arcane University. Wow, look at how tall that one is. Anyway, last episode Hello, we uh, did a quest where we Hello. got some Heard ebony armor. Lately? And we helped the out the Wood Elves Thornier, one we of the most no famous Emperor. of no the Emperor. Wood Elves in Oblivion. Never happened before. I'd say I between Thornier and Glarith, Glarithor, I think is his name, and the Grand Champion you fans. Um, an associate. Oblivion Hello, probably has the most interesting Wood Elf cast. Now, Leowen has a new guild for fighters. Fighters Guild has been an institution in Tamriel for as long as anyone can remember. These brave women, men and women have for countless years always been available to do these those jobs that an average citizen is simply not qualified to handle. Whether it's been ridding a homeowner of a plague of rats, or rescuing a wayward scholar, the Fighters Guild has always been available for anyone with enough coin to pay their modest fees. Now however, it seems that the Fighters Guild is not the only game in town. A new group has recently been making a lot of waves in Cyrodiil. They call themselves the Blackwood Company, and they've let it be known that they can handle any job that the Fighters Guild will, and many that it won't. While the Fighters Guild has always maintained the strictest standards on both the quality of their members and the legality of the contracts they accept, the Blackwood Company makes none of these claims. They have no screening process when accepting new members, and they seem willing to accept any contract, assuming one can afford the price tag. Some have questioned the Blackwood Company's methods. They are rumored to be reckless and indiscriminate. Many of many have spoken of needless damage to persons and property during the fulfillment of a contract. None of those we spoke with were willing to go on record for this article. What f the future holds for this upstart group remains to be seen. Are they the perfect solution for a quickly changing world? Will their methods force the Fighters Guild to adopt more lenient b business practices? Only time will tell, and th till then, if you need a job done, the Fighters Guild and, and the Fighters Guild won't do it. Check out your local Blackwood company. So this is a little um, hint at what's to come in the Fighters Guild quests. Um, we won't be doing a Fighter's Guild quest in Leowen today because we're not high enough rank. So we're going to do Greetings, the mate. Mage's Guild quest. We'll talk to Gaul here. Huh? You seek wisdom from me, child? Ah, no, you seek words. Words are difficult. They come and go. The voices, though, so loud they are, they drown out the words. Without my amulet, my stone to lock the voices away. The words will never come and stay. Would you lift your hands to help another? To help me find the words? Uh, sure, I'll help you out. Then seek Agatha, child. She will see the path and set you on it. I must rest. Hmm. She's been touched by Shea Gorth, apparently. Can you tell me anything more about Agata? She may be young, but her heart is old and wise. It guides her well through these troubled times. Okay. I think Agata was the Farewell, Mage Guild member who was just standing next to us and made us look so short. There she is. Yes? Is there something I can help you with, Associate? I was asked to talk to you about a recommendation. I take it you've spoken to De Gale, then you know she is not well. She has visions, for lack of a better term. While they used to be helpful at times, they have lately become problematic. There was an amulet, a family heirloom that she wore to suppress and sometimes focus the visions. She's lost the amulet, and so has lost control. Can you tell me saying more about these visions that she's been having? At times, they served her well. She gained something of a reputation in the guild and was highly valued by the council. As she aged, the visions became less coherent. Rather than cast her aside, the council gave her a position here. 
Some resent her and wish she'd disappear. I do not. I am proud to help her with her daily tasks. Envy second command. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, where can I find the seer stone to help her out? I'm surprised she discussed it with you. She wanted to keep it from the others. I should speak to her about that. Yes, her seer stone is missing. It's the one thing that has kept her visions at bay. And without it, they're nearly crippling. She can't function. We haven't yet spoken to the others, for fear they would be less than accepting of her situation. Perhaps it is time, though. I will continue to tend to DeGale. Can you speak with the other mages and find out if any of them have seen the stone? Strassa, the Mages Guild, evoker and alchemist, and also, in his scant free time, a trainer in alchemy. But, perhaps you are an adventurer? Could you assist me in acquiring something for my crystal collection? What did you have in mind? Straight to the point, eh? Good, I like that. I'm searching for some specific crystals, known as Garadan's Tears. If you can locate these objects for me, I'd pay handsomely for each one. Perhaps later. Very well. If you change your mind, I'll be here. Now, I wanted to ask you about um, something called a seer stone. I'm afraid I don't know anything about it. I heard it was missing, though. Kalthar was talking about it recently. He seemed very agitated about it. Almost happy. Strange, isn't that? Hmm, that does sound suspicious. Find Goodbye. I think that's him right there. What can I do for you? I heard you knew something about a seer stone. Well, well. Word is finally spreading, is it? They won't be able to keep up this facade much longer. Yeah, I know all about it. I overheard Agata and Dagail talking. And you know what? I'm glad it's gone. Why should we be forced to work under someone who's only kept sane by a magical trinket? Haven't we sacrificed enough already? She shouldn't even be here anymore. Hell, the only reason her father ever fit in anywhere is because he kept a low profile. And look what it got him. Years of service to the Empire, and not even a tombstone over his head. Humph. At least he was able to maintain the illusion of sanity. I know. I get way too fired up over this. It just annoys me that she's in charge of the guild, when she's clearly not fit, that's all. Hmm, but she is fit. She's got the magical trinket. Hmm. You'll see. Things will change. Let's tell, um... Got to about this. Yes? Is there something I can help you with, Associate? Hmm. I suspect that Kalthar did something to De Gaulle's seer stone. So Kalthar overheard us, did he? That explains why he's been so cranky lately. But we never said anything about DeGale's father. How would he know anything about that? If there's some sort of connection between the Seer Stone and DeGale's father, I don't know about it. Maybe if you ask her, it will jog her memory. In the meantime, I'll keep an eye on Kalthar. Be seeing ya. You seek more from me, child? It is as I have seen. I know what you would ask. You would bring light to that which is in darkness, bring silence to the voices so loud. I know where you must go. Blood ran blue and dragons flew high. Under broken towers and broken bodies it now lies waiting to be found. 
What was my sire's must be mine if you would have the words you seek. You must go and find his stone. Okay. Basically, what that means is that we have to go to the fort where her father was buried and retrieve her amulet, her seer stone. So, we'll save real quick after all that chit chat. Make sure I have the right quest marker on. It's in the Blackwood, which is close to the Black Marsh, the homeland of the Argonians. check my spells. I got a few new ones. I've mastered Alteration. And... I've got some better uh, light spells now, so we'll try out one of those, just so that it's not too dark. Travel. Also a more powerful uh, feather spell. Let's see. And we'll light. Last episode, we did that quest for Thornier. After that, off camera, I did the Bravil's Mage's Guild quest. Um, the Mage Guild quests don't seem to be um, particularly popular. I noticed that they've got um, typically more dislikes than likes, and that's sort of understandable. A lot of them are fetch and run, um, kind of boring quests. So, the, and I knew the one in Bravil was basically a fetch and run meant to introduce the player to using illusion magic to change um, NPC dispositions. So I went ahead and did that one off camera. Uh, the remaining mage guild quests, this one, the one in Skingrad, and the one in Anvil, all have some action, so I'll record those and post them to YouTube if you all are interested. Notice that the area around Blackwood is a lot more colorful than it was in the original game. In the original game, it was more of a swamp with dark uh, trees. In this one, they added a little more um, flowers and fall like stuff. And that's using the Lush and Gaudi mod. like a land dray. If you've played Morrowind, you know what dray are. They're some sort of aquatic, um, like a mix between a man and a scorpion. The land dray are kind of like a mix between a scorpion and a man, as opposed to a squid and a man. And they're actually uh, pretty tough, as you can see they're quite meaty. spell. I also got a restoration spell that lets you resist normal weapons. It's called Enhance Reflex. We'll use that as well. Maybe it'll help out. I don't know if this creature's claws are considered magical or not. We've got our nice new ebony sword. The, uh, the Drey were um, sort of the terror of the, the seas in Morrowind. For lower level characters, at least. Morrowind, the creatures didn't level up very much with you the way they do in Oblivion. So, um, the seas became much safer to travel after playing a while. So 
actually pretty bright out here. It really needs a light spell. might also notice that I changed up my um, leveling system. Let's see if we can use that enhanced reflex again. I decided I didn't like how, um, how I was missing out on a lot of opportunities to inter increase stats, um, attributes, because my skills were moving up faster because of the I installed there. He was grinding, but then uh, I was moving up a lot of skills, um, wasting a lot of attribute increases. So I decided to install a mod that I've used before. It's probably my favorite leveling mod. It's called uh, Galaron. Uh, it's natural leveling. Or Galaron leveling revised. And what it does is every two skill increases. The attribute associated with those skill increase, those skills that increased, moves up one point. So if you move up two, um, two strength-related skills, like a blade skill and a blunt skill, your strength will move up one point. You don't have to wait to to sleep and to level up. It just happens automatically. It makes the leveling process a lot more passive, much more. Um, much easier and more productive in my opinion. I don't really care for um, micromanaging, leveling up stats and whatnot, but at the same time I also know from playing in the past, uh, my earlier playthroughs of this game, was that if you ignored leveling up altogether and just moved up attributes as you played along, you usually end up with stats You usually end up with um, some of your um, attributes being really low at higher levels. So my first character was a knight, and he had uh, heavy armor and uh, speechcraft and uh, sword and blunt. And I don't actually want that sharp stone. The result was that when he got about the level that I was running into ogres. Every single hit from them staggered him because he had no skills that were linked to agility. And agility determines whether or not you are staggered as a hit. This light spell is horrible. Hmm. So, um, that then encourages you to play a character who's got skills linked to each of the attributes so that you're not underpowered guy up ahead. A spellcaster of sorts. So, so a shield. And let's actually use one of our spellfire spells on him. I wonder if I'm a high enough level that I can use the ranged one. Not quite. Oh. Oh. Smuggler. And he's got ghosts.
probably quite tired from swinging that heavy sword. So we'll try our Star of the West special power. See if we can get him just to fall on the ground. That worked. I do think there's another one near me. A lot of loot here, but it's heavy, so we'll wait to grab that until we finish this smuggler. She's got the jump on me. She's gonna regret it, though. I'm gonna use this one. I think that spell effect was from a sword that was damaging my armor. I don't see it though. I just got the ton of expensive loot. Quite burned. We'll pop into town real quick. Sell that off. I think it's a good bet to say that the fort's probably going to be loaded with um, bandits, smugglers, and the like. I hear the sounds of combat. Or rather, the battle music. I don't actually see any. There they are. Archers. And I think we will levitate to them. We take them on in hand to hand. If they're using bows, they're probably not quite as good. This one's elven equipment just to see what it looks like. Maybe hold on to it and sell it depending on what we pick up inside the fort. So I believe this elven armor is more of insanities. Should be able to tell from the, the size of the arms. sort of uh, creature's boots. It's the three toes. It's a bit odd. Then it's a mixture of chain and it looks like some sort of leather or bronze. It's pretty cool. Must apologize if you all can hear the stuff in the background. My neighbors are um, having some sort of family gathering, which is cool. But, uh, Noises might travel. Okay, 
So we've got a couple different ways we can light this area. Usually I use the light spell, but there's also um, Night Eye. So I'll use Night Eye for a little while, and then I'll switch over to Light Spell for a little while, and you all can let me know in the comments which you prefer me to use in these darker areas. This is a Night Eye. And it... just colors everything in a, a blue tinge, but brightens it. Let's see, I wanted to put on that enhance reflex. Hello, who's there? spin <laughs> they didn't in falling <laughs> down he goes okay we'll grab his shield and leave the rest of it might grab it on the way out but probably not the shield is heavy which means we won't be moving up our light armor skill but it provides a lot more defense right now, twice as much, so we'll use this since we're carrying it anyway. clear out the dungeon, then we'll go back and pick up what loot we can carry. That's the first one I took out. I'm actually going to hotkey. Oh, we moved up to expert and restoration. Nice. So I'll hotkey what spells I think we'll be using in this dungeon. I think we'll be using the light spell. I think I already have that hotkeyed. Let's see what else. I think we'll use the Enhanced Reflex, so we'll replace our torches with that, since we're carrying a shield. Mm -hmm. What else? I don't think I'll be catching any souls. I might want to... I don't 
don't know about lockpicking, probably some traps. We're probably going to be taking on a mage, so I should probably grab um, the minor spell fire. Uh, I'll put that in place of the um, feather spell for now. I think I took out their mage with my arrows. Oh, maybe not. You just said lower quality equipment. How are you? Fantastic. Here, another one. Let's see if we can do some more sniping. I do have some invisibility and some chameleon magic. Well now. Freezing. 15 extra points of damage. Not bad. But we are overcumbered if we carry it. Should probably start switching up more of my armor with lights so that I can carry more. But for now, I think just casting a feather spell will do it. It's going to be doing almost twice what um, my um, ebony sword is doing. What's that? Must have been the wind. I think there's one above me on the stairs. Huh? Where did you go? Come out uh, when one I further in. Let's see if we can really jump on them again. I can there's see one you. More barbed arrow. I think there's one there. Who's there? Who's there? there are definitely some above me. I'll use a flotation spell to get up there. Islam 
mistake. Yeah, I like this sword. found that to be a particularly useful enchantment. I mean, it probably is on some level, but I'd prefer to kill an enemy in two or three hits than to take two hits to get them down to the point where you can kill them in two or three hits. I can't get enough of that uh, finger snapping on. It reminds me, particularly when I'm playing somebody with destruction magic, hey. Colonel Mustang from Full Metal Alchemist. Ah, I missed him. Now, I think what happened there and why he wasn't immediately getting up again is um, with Supreme Magicka, I haven't talked much about that mod, but it adds additional effects to each magic type. With Cold damage, whether it be from weapons or spells, it is a chance of paralyzing the enemy for a short period. I think it's a 1% chance of doing it. Whereas fire magic, it is a chance of knocking you down, hurling you, so that you ragdoll for a little bit. And with lightning magic, it has a chance, I think, of um, draining either your magicka or disintegrating you. Maybe it's paralyzing you as well. I'm not 100% sure on that. Which is odd because I usually use lightning magic for most. Got him. Everybody has ebony armor. At last, an upgrade for our bow. We've been using uh, that elven bow I borrowed from the um, that swordsman in the cabin for quite a while. At last, we have an upgrade. The eb eb ebony bow <laughs> does the same amount of damage, so it's not really an upgrade. Let's see what it looks like. It matches the suit of armor. Quite well. I'm not sure if I like the look of it though more than the Elmwood bow. Hmm. It all the Elmwood bow also weighs less, so we might just keep the Elmwood bow for a while longer. Did I check that. I did not. Crap, I almost stepped on. This is, I think, where the boss is. So let's actually use our good Elmwood arrows. Ah, oh, you had to move. Spells again. 
I actually have some paralysis magic as well. Let's see. They spotted me. How did I miss that one too? The range on the bow is not nearly as good as I thought it was. Oh well. Let's get some and then let's light up the enemy. Expert of illusion. Nice. Today you die. Take, Take that. <laughs> this could go badly. Yeah. A lot of them. One of them's their boss. These two of them seem to be archers or spellcasters. They don't take many hits. I suppose. <laughs> Especially not with this nice magic claymore. Might be hanging on to this. Let's see if I have some magic to help me take him down faster. I think I have something that boosts my strength. Have you all ever um, read a book called, um, or a series by Richard Baker called, um, it's called Blade, Blade of the Moon Sea or something like that? In it, the uh, the hero is a is a sword mage, and he uses a spell to boost his strength, just for a few seconds, really high, so that he can uh, do pretty amazing things like picking up people and tossing them. A great fantasy book, one of my favorite series. Uh, Richard Baker is actually one of my favorite authors. Um, but I'm planning on it. doesn't look like I have a spell like that. I'm planning on building a restoration spell that will really boost my strengths. Just for a few seconds so that I can do uh, really powerful blows on enemies. There we go. Save me into later. soon with the next part. Thanks for watching.